Who's the most powerful tailed beast? Well, the obvious answer would be ten tails, as all the other tailed beasts are just the fragments of the ten tails. So we won't consider ten tails for this instance. So except ten tails, the obvious answer would be Kurama. Because, like all the other people will say, he has clearly shown that he single-handedly dealt with multiple other tailed beasts at the same time. Most people are attributing this to the fact that Kurama's tailed beast bomb was able to take on the combined might of five other tailed beasts. However, after researching this a little, it turns out that this was not possible because Kurama had so much more chakra than them. It was because he has a special ability that the other tailed beasts do not have which is to supercharge his own tailed beast bomb using means other than pouring his own chakra into it. So while it is assumed that Kurama simply has vast reserves of chakra far greater than the other tailed beasts, it is more like he has the best abilities which include, as mentioned, supercharging tailed beast bombs, ability to gather nature energy, ability to sense negative emotions and chakra from a great distance, just for the sake of argument, however, and because I think I can come up with a decent enough reason, I will say that Son Goku, or Four Tails, is the strongest, or at the very least superior in 1v1 combat against Kurama. Here is why. Kurama's natural affinity is Wind Chakra. Although it has shown that he can also use fire nature to breathe fire, wind is the natural state and what he will typically use if he is actually trying some form of jutsu that requires skill as opposed to using his teeth claws or a tailed beast bomb or breathing fire or just hurling massive chakra blasts at his enemy. But if we are thinking logically, then beings as a tailed beast is essentially a giant, sentient, monstrous amount of chakra walking around in the form of a beast then that means his entire body is naturally composed of specifically wind chakra. Applying the same logic to Son Goku, the Four Tails, he is made up of both fire and earth chakra, and also possesses the Keke Genke of being able to combine the two into molten lava. If Son Goku is made up of fire chakra, then this means Kurama's fire breath or any other fire-based attack is going to have minimal or no effect on Son Goku. This means Kurama will stick to wind chakra as that can actually effectively hurt Son Goku. The obvious drawback to this is that Son Goku's fire techniques will be able to overpower or even draw power from Kurama's wind techniques. Not to mention that any direct fire-based tailed beast attack is going to severely damage and weaken Kurama since he is composed of wind chakra. But Kurama has so much more chakra. No, we do not know that. As I explained before, using the tailed beast bombs as an example of how much more chakra Kurama has than the other tailed beasts is not accurate because of Kurama's special ability. While it clearly tells us that a tailed beast bomb from Kurama will be vastly superior to a bomb from any other beast, it does not mean he actually has more chakra. But he was as strong as the other tailed beasts when he only had half his chakra. Again, not necessarily true. Might I remind everyone that throughout the original Naruto series, Kurama was not split into two beasts, one in Naruto and one in Minato in the Reaper's belly, but actually three. After the Nine Tails rampaged in a village, they gathered up his chakra and cultivated it into another Kurama, which was sealed in a boy, and that Kurama was as strong as the one inside Naruto. The tailed beasts are immortal. If enough chakra is separated from the original body, it grows into its own body. It is entirely possible that the chakra from the Kurama in Naruto, as well as Minato, as well as the boy from that village, were all identical in power levels to the chakra levels of the original Kurama before he was split. Yes, I do understand that this would mean you could theoretically split the tailed beasts as many times as you would like, and each split, once it has had time to grow and heal, would be as powerful as the original which is probably why this logic was never pursued past that one-story arc with the boy from the village. But when Minato's fox and Naruto's were reunited, he got a huge power boost. Yes, he did. And guess what? Chakra sharing was very common among shinobi. Why would that be any different with the tailed beasts, who were once a single creature? When one shinobi shares his chakra with another, it doesn't mean that the chakra levels of the receiving shinobi permanently increase by the amount that he or she was given. Similarly, while Kurama's levels may have doubled, it is entirely possible that this was nothing more than temporary, and once the fight was over, the excess chakra naturally dissipated back down to his normal levels. 
But when Minato stole half his chakra and sealed it in the Reaper belly, Kurama physically got smaller, indicating that his total chakra levels dropped, which means when the two parts were reunited, it increased again. I know, I watched that scene too. It was really good. However, this invalidates the logic that was used to grow the third Kurama, which was sealed inside that village boy, which eventually grew to be as powerful as the fox inside Naruto. A more logical conclusion, which accounts for the fact that the nine tails decreased in size, as well as the nine tails inside the village boy being as strong as the one in Naruto, is that when Minato stole the chakra, Kurama's body decreased in size because he is literally made of chakra. However, after having years of rest and recovery inside of Naruto, his chakra replenished itself as it does in all shinobi and he regained his size back. We never saw a size comparison of a more mature Naruto's nine tail versus the one that Minato sealed in him after stealing the chakra. But it is entirely possible that Naruto's was back to full size. This would also explain why the village boy's fox was as strong as Naruto's. The tailed beasts lose chakra, they rest, they recover it, they get back to full strength. But Minato said he did that specifically so that Naruto could handle the nine tails power. What would be the point if Kurama just got it back a few days later? That's an excellent point. If we follow the logic of my arguments, my hypothesis is that Minato needed Kurama weakened for the initial sealing to work. Additionally, since Kurama's entire body is made of chakra, it could take years and years for him to replenish what was taken. And he spent most of those years locked inside the equivalent of a cell, severely weakened. So it's no wonder that it would take so long. While Kurama was gathering his strength, Naruto's body was acclimating to the fox's power until Naruto could handle Kurama at full strength, exactly as Minato intended. Think about it. The Nine Tails was the Hidden Leaf Village's best option of defending against other tailed beasts. Minato was the Hokage, tasked with protecting the Hidden Leaf. If Minato didn't think that Kurama would be getting his power back, then Naruto would potentially be at a severe disadvantage any time he fought another tailed beast, compared to what he could do if the fox inside him was at full power. And I think Minato loved his son too much to start him at a disadvantage like that. If you could permanently lower a being's chakra levels by sealing a portion of their chakra away, then it would have made a better storyline, been more poetic and more effective for the third Hokage to seal Orochimaru's chakra away, as opposed to permanently taking his arms. Stealing Orochimaru's chakra would have significantly weakened him more than taking the arms, as it would have prevented him from using all those ridiculously powerful jutsu. But I'm guessing the third knew that was only a temporary measure as Orochimaru would have just rested and recovered and gained it all back, while taking the arms was a more long-term solution. As for the argument of more tails equals more power, they said exactly that in the show. Yes, that may or may not be true. Kurama was the only one who said it. Kurama has more tails than anyone. Kurama is an extremely vain and self-centered being. Kurama has proven that he is a F asterisk C King liar. And that is literally the only evidence we have that I know of that actually supports that argument. Even if it were true, it could just mean that each tail gives a 1% chakra boost, meaning the nine tails only has an 8% increase in chakra over the one tails. That's more than a little bit, but not a lot. Also, it doesn't make sense. Why would someone like the Sage of the Six Paths, who is all about peace and equality, and people being measured by their work and not natural abilities, then proceed to go and create the tailed beasts, knowing that each one would be at a disadvantage from the next? He would try to make sure they were all created equally. They viewed him as a father, and I'm guessing he viewed them as family as well. That is just not something he would do. Sorry that last point was so long. More chakra seems to be the defining factor for people's answers, so I was trying to go as far in depth as to why Kurama may not actually have any more chakra than any of the other tailed beasts as I could think of. So, at this point I have hopefully cast at least a little doubt as to Kurama's superior chakra levels as well as brought up the fact that Kurama is at a natural disadvantage to Son Goku, given their respective chakra natures. So now let's examine fighting styles. Son Goku has a humanoidish body style with four tentacles, which are his tails. Goku is surprisingly nimble given his size and skilled at taijutsu, which Kurama is not. 
Fun fact about tentacles, octopuses and other cephalopods are able to use each simultaneously and independently from each other, unlike nearly all humans or other animals. Because each tentacle has a sort of suedo brain at the end, which thinks independently from the main brain, while Kurama with his nine tails has more limb-like extremities than Goku giving him an advantage, Goku is most likely able to focus more on the technique of his main body, while his tentacles just need an attack order and can attack on their own in perfect simultaneous conjunction with his fists. Couple this with the fact that every physical attack Goku lands on Kurama can have a fire nature element added to it, as well as his taijutsu capabilities, and Goku would rock Kurama in close combat hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Goku can also use his magma ability to create molten rock armor, providing him with a decent defense against Kurama's claws and teeth. So ultimately, when it comes down to it, overall Kurama is assumed to be the natural strongest the other tailed beasts look up to him. He has the best worst reputation among humans for his deeds, and he is very intelligent. But unless the fight between Kurama and Son Goku comes down to each of them hurling chakra attacks and tailed beast bombs at each other from a distance, in which case Kurama would be the clear winner given his tailed beast bomb supercharge ability, I believe Son Goku would be the winner simply because of his natural advantages over Kurama and Taijutsu abilities. Again, this is only the case if he can avoid Kurama's tailed beast bombs as those would knock him easily. I expect and would love to hear reasons as to why Kurama would beat him, but I ask that those are given in a non-confrontational manner. This is VerseTube and thanks for watching. Too big for rain.